Good evening. This is Robin Nelson with another edition of Wrestle Popcast. And my guests tonight are the Bold and the Beautiful's Shea Solo and Jacob Rose. How's it going, guys? What's up, Robin? Living the dream, baby. All right. Um, you're getting your name, you guys' names out there out in the indies. So um, you also wrestle at Future Great Wrestling as well. So where do you guys uh, go from there? Well, Future Great Wrestling is our home. It's where we were trained by Cody Hawk. Um, we were the first ever tag team champions here. But definitely our goals for this summer, uh, for this upcoming year, we want to travel, man. And, I mean, you know, we've already wrestled in Indiana. Um, but we want to you know, expand. We've wrestled all throughout Ohio. But we want to keep making waves. Um, we love wrestling. We love tag team wrestling. And, I mean, just to be real, we're pretty damn good at it. I think you guys are pretty good at it. You guys have that great chemistry in the ring. And also, um, you guys can read each other, which is pretty interesting. That comes from being actual friends. I mean, Jake's my bro. Jake's my little brother in the business. I'm his big brother. Sometimes he's the big brother because I'm kind of crazy. But, you know, it's just one of these things where – we trained together for years. Like, this didn't just happen. Um, and I, I think we push each other to be better. I mean, that's the whole thing. We push each other to be better because we want to take this to the next level. It's funny. Uh, the three of us were talking about this before the podcast. You know, here at um, Hawks Training Academy, FGW, like, let's be real. The measuring stick is John Moxley and L.A. Knight. So making it to a high level is not something that a student – and a worker hasn't done from this school. Speaking of something funny, uh, tonight we were talking in the locker room. You guys were saying you guys are brothers, right? Yeah. I thought it was funny when uh, Jake called you dad. Look, we uh, the, the age thing is a sensitive topic here, so we're just going to go off the record and say that I am the oldest of the group. Exactly. Uh, Shay is just now turning 16. Young stud. I'm turning uh, 45. Does that, does that sound good, Shay? It sounds exactly right. Yeah, okay. Obviously. I'm not sensitive about my age because there's nothing to be sensitive about. Come on now. I also compared you guys to the Rockers, Shawn Michaels, Marty Jannetty. You guys have the same ring attire that they usually did, all the bright colors. I mean, well, I wouldn't say we have the same attire as, you know, the Rockers. I mean, influenced by, yes. Yeah, absolutely. But it's not, it's, it's not a blatant ripoff. We're, we're taking the rockers and putting a bold and a beautiful spin on it. And it's not just the rockers we're doing that with. We're trying to find really the most successful tag teams and put our own little spin on it because we don't want to be the next rockers. We don't want to be the next Midnight Express. We don't want to be the, new, the next Young Bucks. We want to be the first ever bold and the beautiful Jacob Rosen's Shea Solo. Damn straight. That's it, you know. But I will say, and I, may, I don't know if I'm speaking for, for, for both of us, but the dream match – for Bold and the Beautiful, is the Young Bucks. I mean, straight up, there is no match. We want more. I know that's shooting in the sky, but, you know, when the Young Bucks are ready, we're ready. So you guys are ready for their super kick parties. Hey, man, we're always ready to party. So you probably will end up taking another party super kick by uh, Sean Casey too, right? You know, I mean... Sean's a vital part of the company. He's off doing what he's doing. Our main focus at FGW is the tag team championships. And like I said, you know, it's really not just the home base. I mean, like, we're really blessed to be coming out of COVID. And, um, like, you know, we're ready to go to Canada. Hell, we'll go to Japan. Like, we are ready to make waves in this business because we make the people feel something. We're not there to make you smile. We're not there to have you clap for us. We know how good we are. And you will see that and you will feel that every single time you see Shea Solo and Jacob Rose in the ring. We respect this business. That's why we put in the work to become as good as we are. I was gonna, I'm going to ask you guys this question. How did you guys come up with Bold and the Beautiful? It, it was kind of a, a group decision with more than just Shay and I. I'm not even going to say that it was Shay and I's ar- idea initially, uh, but we did hear it and we're like, you know what, we do like that. We it kind of fits us. It, we can make that into, we can make that something, and that's exactly what we did. We took a a silly name and we put meaning behind it. It's it, sorry, uh, bold and the beautiful. You think that, and it's it's what two pretty men or girls i mean like it doesn't matter it's 
and we put funny behind it. We put serious behind it. We put badass behind it. We are giving the bold and the beautiful a name. That way, people can actually see us and think, you know what? They're not just they're not just a, a, a name. Yeah, Jake's absolutely right. The reason the bold and the beautiful fits us and maybe won't always fit us is we're the whole show. We will make you hate us. Uh, there's going to be a lot of you who love us because we're super hot. You're going to want to party with us. You're going to want to fight us. We make people feel something every single time we enter the arena. And, the, you know, the fact – it's so interesting you brought that up, Robin, because, you know, as Jake and I make our plans over the next year of how our tag team's going to make it, the thing we know, this team's about Solo and Rose. It's about Rose and Solo. Whatever the name is, we're the, we're, we're the team. You know, we're the crew. And um, we've worked with a lot of people and we've brought other people in. But as a tag team – I am ready to be on any platform at any stage because that's how confident I am in our tag team work. Because here's the thing. We love this. Like, we love this business. We still come every single week, and we train. You know, we work hard. We talk about this. This is something – this isn't a one day a week. You know, we always tell them, like, this is not a gimmick. It's a lifestyle, and that's real. I think it's real because every time you guys get in a ring, every time I see you every Friday night, you guys uh, put in your blood, sweat, and tears and 100% in your matches. And uh, you get a lot of uh, the fans in- invest in you guys. You guys get that huge pop. Well, that's because, I mean, if, as a worker, you're supposed to go out there and you're supposed to show every night, every time you step through those ropes that you are the best person to ever do it. And that's what we are doing. We put our blood, sweat, and tears. We, we put it all on the line because we want to show the people that we are exactly who we say we are. We are the baddest team in this business. We are the future of this business. And we will be the best to ever step foot in that ring. That's, that's the plan of the bold and the beautiful. Whether it's us traveling and winning titles. Whether that's us going in and just wreaking havoc we are going to be the best at it because we are Jacob Rose and Shea Solo. I mean, just imagine, if you will, uh, a dragon covered in all different colors, spitting fire in all different colors, and the sky exploding. It would catch your eye. It would captivate you. We are some wild dudes. Like, when we enter the arena, all hell breaks loose. I I I can't express to you how many fans have told us they hate us. They're going to kill us. They're going to beat us up. They're going to do stuff with our mom. I mean, like, it has gotten so bad. But here's the thing. We bring it so much harder than all these fans. They can't hang with us. It's so funny. We go to all these little towns, and all these fans think they can match Solo and Rose's energy. They think they can match Rose and Solo's, you know, attitude, and they never can. We make the people feel something every single time we enter the arena. You know, we, are, we were born to do this. This is our destiny. Let's talk about a, the ladies. You have a lot of lady fans, too, a lot of beautiful lady fans, and you have some very interesting lady fans, too. We're hot. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, Robin. Yeah, we may be jerks, but apparently that's what the girls are into nowadays. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't help that we are two smoking hot young men. I mean, I've always heard, like, if you're kind of dead inside and crazy, it's a real panty dropper. And uh, Jake and I, are, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty messed up. But for some reason, people just seem to be attracted to it. And it does make sense because, you know, a lot of people, like a lot of women's, you know, husbands and, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of men's husbands get mad at us because, like, they're just checking us out. They can't, you know, can't keep their mouth closed or drooling. You know, people are fainting in the crowd. You know, if you saw our inboxes, dude, golly. <laughs> I'm having so much fun right now. I wish I had a joint to roll up and smoke a blunt with both of you guys. Wow. <laughs> I'm not saying we do any of those things. For legal reasons, that was a joke. Yeah, that was so, that was so a joke by our host here tonight. Yeah, it was a joke. I was trying to bring something funny to liven it up. <laughs> but, but we do love to slam beers and party and have a great time. And we get our butts in the gym the next morning. So, like, we're the total package. I mean, it's almost like a throwback to the old days of wrestling. We're real men, you know. Jake's over 200 pounds. I'm over 200 pounds. We're not small dudes. We will fight you. 
We will get in there. We'll fight you in the parking lot. We'll fight you in the ring. But we will literally be at the bar till 3 a.m., slamming beers, making out with ladies. Jake's over there singing karaoke because he gets a little wild. But hold, 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 hold. Jake sings karaoke. Oh, yeah. So what type of songs does Jake karaoke to? You remember when Shay said that we were dead inside? <laughs> All the emo music you can think All of. All the emo music. All right, I'm not going to lie to you. This is King Emo Rose. Yeah. It's, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. But, again, you know, that this kid, he's got the face to lead a band, so it makes sense. But I don't have the voice, though. <laughs> I can't sing to save my life. But she can play guitar, right? Yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah. I can wrestle, and that's what matters, that's all right? What, that's what we do. What we do is we wrestle, but afterwards, I'll tell you right now, Ric Flair himself could not keep up with the bold and the beautiful at the bar. I'm just keeping it real. Oh, that's good. I would I would pay to see you take Ric Flair out. Robin, come on, dude. I can go to the bar tonight. I'll drink 39 beers. I'll have 12 shots. I'll eat 100 chicken wings. Then I'll have five more beers and do 10 more shots. Like, it's no big deal. I'm Shea Solo. Come on, get on my level. <laughs> so when you guys are not in a wrestling ring, what does Shea Solo and Jake Rose enjoy doing? Hitting that gym, baby. Hitting the gym. Yeah. We're... we're Go ahead. I'm sorry. No. Okay. We love hitting the gym, and like we love to have a good time. Um, okay. I want to just be honest. Jacob Rose is my little brother in this business. He means so much to me. I really do care for him. But our favorite food happens to be wings, chicken wings. But um, if I had to say there's one thing that I hate about Jacob Rose, he likes fake chicken wings. I love, love real chicken wings. So what I like to do in my free time. This. Do not real, start this. Okay, real. look. Boneless wings are the superior wings, and I will take that to my grave. I will shoot you over this. <laughs> and for legal reasons, that is also a joke. Yeah. For legal reasons, it's a joke that I will run you over with a bus if you ever bring boneless wings to my home. J- Jake, again, you're a talented wrestler. You got a hell of a face. We got a bright, bright future. But, again, we love to have fun. We love to party. We eat our chicken wings separately. When the Browns go to the Super Bowl this year, you're not invited to the, the wow. Super Bowl party because there's only going to be boneless wings like a real man. All right? Thank you, Shea Solo. When the Bengals shock the world and beat the Browns, the Ravens, and the Steelers this year, and we go to the play- – not we, Cincinnati goes to the playoffs. <laughs> we, I include myself, I am the, the Nasty Natty's favorite son, Shea Solo. But, again – we're bros. We love football. We love sports. We love tailgating. You know? Wait a second. Does Cincinnati have a team? Is Paul Brown Stadium, is that a high school football stadium? Okay. Ha ha. Robin Nelson apparently is going to start writing for Jimmy Fallon with that kind of material. So, news flash, everybody. Our host, Robin Nelson, is an Indianapolis Colts fan. And, like, again, I don't mind the Colts. I actually don't mind the Browns. I think we all can agree the Steelers suck. Steelers fans, and I completely 100% agree, but I'm not going to say that just in, be- just in case a promoter is a Steelers fan, and they're like, you know what, a Browns and a Bengals fan, they'll never be on my show. Okay. To all promoters from Pittsburgh, I'm just joking. Everybody outside of Pittsburgh, Steelers suck. I totally agree with you on that as well, especially the New England Patriots, too. I'm not mad at, I, I, I'm not mad at the Patriots. I like Tom Brady. Yeah, I love- I like Tom Brady. The greatest of all time. Hands down, yeah. Tom's the Tom's the goat, and Julian Edelman's the man. Again, everybody. Robin Nelson's a Colts fan, so he's just out here hating. Don't worry about it. No, I was I was going to say my two favorite quarterbacks. If you guys are going to say Brady, I agree with you. Brady is a phenomenal quarterback. My two quarterbacks I would put up there would be Joe Montana and, of course, my boy Peyton Manning. I mean, I mean, I mean, Peyton don't got the rings, bro. That second, that second ring, it was given to him. You don't have to have rings to be a great quarterback. Jake, we're the first ever FGW Tag Team Champions. I mean, they're not us. They are no right, I mean, they're us. Right. Tom, Tom Brady's good, but he's no Shea Solo Jacob Rose. Like, basically, Jake and I, imagine if Tom Brady and Michael Jordan had twins. <laughs> that would be Jake and I. Dude, that would be a beautiful baby. Well, look at us. It makes sense, doesn't it? Right, when like when we're, when we, we were born in a test tube of Michael Jordan and Tom Brady's DNA. 
<laughs> Makes perfect sense. Remember when test tube, ba- test tube baby was an insult, and now we're just oh yeah, we're we are we are proud we're of being proud a test tube baby. Yeah. Speaking of you guys, what you just said, you guys are the first ever Future Great Wrestling Tag Team Champions in FGW history since FGW's been around for three years, and you guys, when you guys got those titles, man. I was so proud of you, so excited about it, and you know, and you guys deserve to be the number one contenders, and you should be still having those belts today. You know, Robin, we're going to get our belts back, because here's the thing, they're not going to outwork us. Like, it always seems like, oh, we just keep saying who we work harder. We do. We work harder. And here's the other thing. We're hella talented. So, as my favorite bodybuilder, Phil, he says... When talent meets hard work, you can't beat it. You can't beat talent and hard work combined. And that's the difference between us and the other teams. Some of them work hard. Some of them are talented. We got both. All right, since you guys go out on the road to different promotions, getting, your, getting the bold and beautiful out there, is there some cool road stories you can share with us on this podcast? Uh, driving home from Toledo once in one of those northern Ohio winters, we thought that was it. <laughs> I, I stopped talking for 30 seconds, and Shay said I stopped talking for 20 minutes and flipped out on me. I was like, look, man, I don't know what to tell, say right now, all right? I feel like we're about to die. And he's like, oh, just say something, damn it. We drove through three feet of snow with 75-mile wind. There was also a tornado happening in the blizzard. What do they call that, a blizzard NATO? Yeah. We drove through a blizzard tornado, okay? Like, what do you think? Oh, yeah, that's awesome. My favorite thing is we went to the show, and there was no snow in sight. Like, it was clear skies, sunny. everything. Sun- Super sunny. Yeah, yeah. We leave the show maybe two hours later, and as soon as we walk out that door, there are, there's three to four feet of snow. And we're like, where did this come from? <laughs> like, I don't know how we're getting home. Somehow we made it. <laughs> That just does not make sense. That's northern Ohio. All the people in the uh, lake effect, you know, your Cleveland's, your Pittsburgh's, your Detroit's, they know, like, I don't want any of your winter. Like, please book us, but, like, come around December and January. Please still book us. (laughs) We we talk a lot of trash, but please still book us. (laughs) Let's talk about a promoter who loves you guys a lot and uh, thinks very highly of you. Um, let's talk about Keith P. Miller. WFW, uh, we've known Keith for a while. Um, he's put some belief in our team. Uh, but the fact of the matter is we're the best tag team at that company. And just like at every company we go to, we expect to be tag team champions. It's that simple. It's that simple. You can't go in this business and not believe in yourself. And with all due respect, he's got, he has talented wrestlers there. Uh, their, their current tag champs are talented, but look, we're better. We're going to go. We're going to prove it. No matter where, what company we go to, we prove it. We've proved it here at FGW. We've proved it at World's Finest Wrestling. We've, we're going to prove it anywhere we go. We are going to win every single tag belt in this world. You know, I think we want to get down south. I mean, it's summertime. We like girls in Daisy Dukes and cowgirl boots. And I'm just telling you, like, I like barbecue. I like having a good time. Jake likes having a good time. We're trying to get down to Tennessee, Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida. I mean, like, we're trying to have a good time and kick ass because that's what we do. How about Texas? Well, cowboy. (laughs) I love to go to Texas. I've always wanted to go. I want to move down there at some point. I don't know why. I don't know why I love Texas. But, whew, I love it. I, it may be the Daisy Dukes. It may be the Daisy Dukes. With all, yeah, I was going to say, sincerely, um, Booker T's Reality of Wrestling is really growing in Texas. An amazing company. Um, you know, I'm multiracial. Booker T really meant a lot to me growing up. Um, he represented something of just, he was so damn good. Him and Stevie Ray, that they really inspired me again. Another great tag team that inspires Jake and I, Harlem Heat. Uh, but yeah, man, we get down to Texas. Wow, we could end up wrestling for Booker T or any other great companies down there. That'd be amazing. 
Speaking of Texas, I'm like Jake, too. Um, I always wanted to move down there, too. Before COVID hit, I was that close to moving down to Dallas, Texas. But uh, COVID ruined it. And the thing I like about Texas is, you know, the people are very friendly. You got the barbecue. It's a hotbed for professional wrestling. And also, if you're a big, huge horror fan. Okay. I want to say one thing first. Dallas, Texas represents wrestling because of the most amazing wrestler from the 80s. The most under, maybe not the most amazing, but the most underrated wrestler of the 80s, Kerry Bon Eric. Texas Tornado, you know, Natural Born Warrior. Whatever you want to call them, just amazing. And him and the Von Erichs with WCCW made Dallas what it was. But, but, yeah, man, I mean, dude, Texas is a great time, dude. I mean, we like to party. We like to have a good time. Um, you know, hotbed for wrestling, hotbed for partying, you know. If you're going to um, talk about that, I can see you guys going up to Canada, up into Toronto. They got so much professional wrestling up there and a lot of great independent promotions. You got Smash Wrestling. You got Chin Lock Wrestling. You got Super Kicked Wrestling. It'd be kind of cool to see the bold and beautiful uh, American tag team making their names for themselves up in Canada. Get our passports. Get our passports. Book us. We'll be there in a heartbeat. Sir. Uh, Shay Solo is an international man of love, so I have my passport. But, Jake, we'll get yours, too. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, Canada, Jake and I are a little different in age. I won't give us any clues. But inspirations growing up, we both were definitely inspired by Canadian wrestlers. I mean, for myself, you know, Owen and Bret Hart, of course. And for Jake, Edge, like, Canada is just this. It represents to me innovative wrestling and like all long-time wrestling fans know like canadian wrestling has always just brought a little something extra i think so too and i also miss a lot of the grappling wrestling the old school wrestling you hardly ever see that everybody wants to go in the ring and you know do flips and flies you don't really see any like grappling or all that good old school stuff i mean it's another reason jake and i want to wrestle ftr because we don't, I mean, like, we can do it. We can do the flips. We can, we can jump off the top. We can do anything. But we go in there to win. We go in there to win, and we don't care what we got to do to make sure it happens. So do you think in today's wrestling um, there's a lot of uh, lack of storytelling? I, I just personally feel like everyone wants to get their stuff in, and they, they want to get their stuff in to the point where – they don't care if they tell a story. As long as they look good, that's all that they care about. But that's not what we are about. That's not what Shay and I are about. We we get in there, we can do the bare minimum of moves and still put the story over because we're just that good. That's what that's what professional wrestling is about is storytelling. Yeah, we want to look good, but if we can get the story over and look good, that's the point. If we're going to go that way, too, it seems like a lot of wrestlers today, I'm not saying all, some of them don't even want to do a promo. I mean, for us, they're not even promos. It's just part of being who we are. And for those people, and again, I, I appreciate all my brothers and sisters and non-binary um, members of, of the wrestling org family, but I will say that for me, it just says to me, it's just an act for them. The thing is, you know, Solo and Rose, this isn't an act. Like, this is who we are. And every great wrestler of the past, man or woman, they were all, that's who they were. It was never just like, oh, I'm this person on Friday nights for a couple of hours. I am crazy as hell 24-7. Ask Jake. I call him a lot. Jake is crazy as hell 24-7. This is who we are. And those people who don't cut promos, it's because this isn't truly, the business isn't truly a part of them like it is for Jake and I and many others in the business. Hey, I totally agree with you. I mean, there's some out there serious. I mean, some really, really like you guys will go out there and make a name for themselves because you guys want to get up to the next level. You want to get up to, you know, WWE or AEW, MLW, or even Ring of Honor. Or even... We'd be honored to be a Ring of Honor. We'd be honored to go to Impact. We'd be honored to be invited to New Japan. Just because when we step between those ropes, we're not going to show you any respect and we're going to kick your ass because that's what we all signed up for. 
But outside of those ropes, before the show, after the show, we respect this business because we love this business. Speaking earlier on the podcast, um, you were talking about Cody Hawk's, you know, professional wrestling academy. Um, he's one of the best trainers out there, you know, like you said, John Moxley, you know, L.A. Knight. So uh, since you've uh, trained with Cody, what were some of the things you learned from him before he let you go out into the world of independent wrestling? I learned everything from him. Everything I know in this business, I learned from Cody Hawk. I started with him, and I could not ask for a better trainer. He genuinely is the best trainer around, and it shows in his work. Um, I was lucky enough to go out to Vegas when CAC, Cauliflower Alley Union, awarded Cody with being you know, the best trainer in the country. And, again, not to name drop, but to see someone of a John Moxley's level not just tell the crowd in a speech, but he told me personally that the difference between Cody and every other coach, and this is beyond wrestling, this is anything, if you ask him to help, ask him to teach you, he won't stop until you learn it or you quit. That's the difference. If you want to quit, that's on you. He won't. He demands excellence. And um, you know, I think for both of us, we owe him a lot when it comes to our wrestling careers. I've learned so much from him, too. And to respect you guys, you know, how you guys are in a ring and, you know, you um, beat your bodies up a lot. I decided to get in the ring myself, took a couple of training courses. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, you can ask Cody this. And I got in there, man, and I tell you, man, I couldn't handle it. I mean, I totally respect you. I mean, I, t- I ran the ropes, you know, I took some bumps, but – I did it just, just at, you know, to see what if I can do it. I wasn't doing it to get respect from anybody in the business. I just did it. And then Cody comes up to me. He goes, I want to tell you something. He's like, what's that? He goes, I respect you. And he goes, it, that took a lot of balls for you to get in that ring. Absolutely. Independent wrestling. Every independent wrestling crowd that you attend here throughout the United States, Canada, Japan, Mexico, wherever you go. Um, also, we'd love to be booked in Mexico. Please, AAA. Um, but you, you, the crowd's always full of people who said, oh, I'm coming to the wrestling school. I'm going to train, and I'm going to become a wrestler. And I'll tell you, I've been in the business about five years now, and I've seen a lot of these people come get in that ring and try it. Bro, the fact that you lasted as long as you did, I know people who have tried doing what we did, they tried one thing, and they left. And not even on their own. Like, some of them had to be carried out because being a pro wrestler is one of the hardest things on the planet. I totally agree. That's why I totally respect you guys inside and the outside of the ring. And I'm, I'm glad I did it, you know, because some people will be like, oh, you do all this, interview these wrestlers, and you're part of certain promotions and all that, but you never know what's it like to be a wrestler. And I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> well, Robin, with all due respect, you do not know what it's like to be a wrestler. But the fact, the fact that you got the ring, yeah, the fact that you got the ring, sincerely, man, that is a lot of respect. Here at FGW, we do a lot of fantasy camps. And I'll say this, anybody out there considering ever come to one, if you last through the entire thing, it says a lot about you. Because a lot of folks, they do the first couple of drills, and they're done. This is not easy. So, Shay, I'm going to go with you first. Where can everybody find you on social media if they want to book you or people want to follow you and see what you're going to be doing next? Hell yeah. Okay, so I'm Shay, C-H-E, last name, Solo, S-O-L-O. I'm Shay Solo on Facebook. You can like my page. Uh, You can message me through my page or book me that way. On Instagram, on IG, I'm Shay Solo one same exact spelling, C-H-E-S-O-L-O-1. So just search for Shea Solo, C-H-E-S-O-L-O. I'm Jacob Rose on Facebook. Same as Shea. Message me, inbox me, whatever. Uh, On Instagram, I am JacobRose98. And I think that's all the social media I have. Uh, You're a dummy. You can't spell Jacob. That's J-A-C-O-B. You'd be surprised. Some people like to spell it with a P. I don't know why. Jacob? Jacob? That, that's duh. That's why I did it for all the idiots out there. That's why I spelled it out. <laughs> <laughs> Since you guys have all, um, all the social media, how come you guys just don't have a straight bold and the beautiful page too? So, uh, 
again, what we alluded to earlier in the conversation, you know, I'll give a great analogy. In Pokemon, <laughs> you're not always what you are from the beginning. Sometimes you evolve into what you truly are meant to be. That was such a weird way of putting that. All my Pokemon people felt that deep. No, what? No, no, no. Even as a Pokemon fan, you put, a, you put that very odd. Yeah, I didn't know Shay Solo was a straight Pokemon fan. Really? He's, not. He's a fake fan. I'm the Pokemon fan. He is not. Name, name more. Name uh, anyone that's not in the original 151 Pokemon, Shay. See, why you gotta hit me? I'm, I'm from a different generation of Pokemon. All right, don't don't hate. That, that's just wrong. Okay, let's move on to the next question. I just think that's funny you guys are into Pokemon. I did not know that. This is this is the first for me. I respect that. Jake's really mad. I'm way better at the Pokemon game than him, and it's really caused an issue in our friendship. I'd mess you up if we ever played Pokemon, and you know that. I would pay to see that. I would film it. I'd like to see you guys go head-to-head into a Pokemon tournament. Hey, Pokemon, you can sponsor us too. We're open for business. <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you for <laughs> coming out coming out of your busy schedule. And you guys, you know, had a great match, but you guys got screwed at the end, you know. And about that David Barnabas Spectre, he's not your best friend. He's not best for business for you guys. And you guys keep on falling for it, and he keeps on screwing you. You know what? Uh, David and I did have a close friendship, but... Someone said on um, social media recently, in the wrestling business, 50 of the people don't give a damn if you're there, 45 of the people want to screw you over, and your crew, your family is about five people. Dave is not in my five. I'm a big boy. I've moved on. Me and Jake will be FGW Tag Team Champions again, and we will win Tag Team Gold not only here in the United States, but also outside. All right. Thank you so much. And everybody, thank you for listening to Wrestle Popcast. You can follow Wrestle Popcast at Podcast City Network at podcastcity.net. And you can follow me at iHeartRadio, Spotify, all the great platforms out there in the world of podcasting. And also you can find me at Hitting the Marks Podcast Network and also at Google Podcasts. Everybody have a great evening.